So uh, they are definitely recruiting some hardcore people to get involved in this fight. Well, we're seeing the the Russians having uh, and President Putin having to take a lot more seriously uh, mobilizing troops, personnel to take on the Ukrainians. I mean, over the summer, we saw the Ukrainians get lots of rocket launchers and missile systems from the West and use them quite effectively, which has quite shaken the Russian military. So President Putin has had to do something to try and restore the balance to the Russian front in uh, in Ukraine. And we're seeing, as you said, all this recruiting activity. Some of it's going really badly. We saw with, with, with the shootings, whatever. But at other places, uh, the BBC, well, I hate to mention it, Sorry. they went to a recruiting centre in Moscow. They seemed quite happy and were, were cheering and were their mothers were happy to see them go off to do their patriotic duty. So it, it, it's a mixed picture. Um, the proof of the pudding will be whether these guys can fight. Uh, we haven't seen that yet. And uh, that's a real test of this. Well, yeah. And you say it's a test, Tim. I mean, I read from some analysts that the people who are being recruited are from the far reaches of uh, Russia, people who are from ethnic minorities, people who are financially impoverished, people who've been in jail. What does this tell us about the appeal, the real appeal of this war, um, the real pull it has on people who want to do, quote, their patriotic duty? Well, um, you can say that the same time of people join the British Army or the American Army, um, it, it, it's a it's a classic case of, um, you know, in hard times, uh, people get desperate. And the, the, the Russians have, have a tradition of recruiting from the fringes of their, their empire, um, from Siberia, from the Caucasus, to do their dirty work. Um, and it, it's a classic thing that the, 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 the you know, this is a terrible shorthand phrase, but the, the, the soft people in Moscow and St. Petersburg, the urban elite, yeah. aren't very keen on this. Whereas some of the I think General Carter used it to do with the Taliban. The farm boys from the countryside yeah. are more up for a fight and have, see it as a way to get out of the, their, their humdrum life in the backwoods of Siberia. So it, it, it's a mix. Uh, how much information do you think about the true nature of this special operation has filtered down to those farm boys in the backwoods of Siberia, do you think? Not very much, but they know it's a war now. There's no pretense anymore that it's just a, a local difficulty. It's a serious situation. Now, uh, also, we see quite importantly, I think, uh, lots of recruiting going on in the Caucasus in Chechnya, where you have um, the militia forces of the Chechen leader, who is a key ally of President Putin. Uh, last Thursday, he went on TV with a parade of 5,000 of his guys who were all fully equipped, they had armoured vehicles, they had the whole works, and they drove off towards Ukraine. So uh, they are definitely recruiting some hardcore people to get involved in this fight, not just you know drunks, but some serious hardcore Chechen fighters who are you know, have a reputation for being really you know brutal fighters and are not going to give up and are quite determined people. Yeah, but haven't uh, Russia deployed people like that already? And um, yes. they've been well, limited by the lack of um, military planning and by the lack of proper training for a real conflict as opposed to going around doing massacres in Syria or elsewhere. Yeah, well, the, 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 the issue, of course, for the Russians is that they have conquered loads of territory in Ukraine. They've, the front line is now a thousand kilometres long. They don't have enough men to man it. So they have lots of artillery, they still have all their artillery, and they still have their fighter planes, they still have their bombers and their attack helicopters, but they don't have guys on the ground to fill the gaps. And, and last, a few weeks ago, we saw the Ukrainians take advantage of this these gaps and, and sneak in and try and surround the Russians, and they re had to retreat. So these are what these guys are going to do. They're going to sit in the trenches and take casualties, a bit like World War I, yeah. but that's what the Russians haven't got at the moment. They haven't got men to hold the line. And yeah. that, that's trying to, try to resolve. I mean, they might be very good. They might not, you know, they might take really heavy casualties, but they, 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 they're serving a purpose to, you know, soak up the Ukrainian attack. Yeah.